the people you meet immediately here, of course, are the other occupants of the house, the people who have come here to do a, a project, an artistic project of some kind. But you also meet various people in the village, and that's very nice. And uh, extraordinarily uh, eccentric people occasionally, like the 90-year-old who lives down the street and uh, uh, has trapped and caught his own wild boar and keeps it locked up in a large, very large animal with very large tusks in a very small shed quite nearby where you walk. And that's rather fun to observe and to get safely by. And then there are other people, a woman here from... Uh, well, again, I think I was talking before about Siberia, and she was uh, one of these mystics and would go and chant and talk to the spirit of the river in the valley and the gorge below. That was always interesting to, uh, to watch as well. And then you have strange and odd experiences. I come from Australia where bushfires are common and we really admire our firemen and our, what, we, what we call fireys, the guys who save us from bushfire and uh, industrial fires in city contexts and so on. But on one occasion when I was here in La Mouse, uh, we did have the possibility, the prospect of a fire, as you sometimes have in very old houses. Now this is very safe, this environment, and um, the fireplaces which are so wonderful and important during the winter months here um, have all been reconditioned and rebuilt so that the place is extremely safe. But there was a, one occasion when I was here in early spring and uh, we were suddenly aware that there was a problem with the fire. The chimney goes up through three storeys and emerges at the top of the, uh, at the, top of the house. And from various other places higher up in the village, including the mayor's office, they suddenly saw that the chimney, the steel chimney, the new one coming out of La Mouse, was glowing red. And suddenly, some of us were sitting in the library here, in rushed the mayor and four or five of his colleagues, whoa, 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 we have a problem, c'est dangereux. Um, it's a difficulty, we could have a fire here. So we all looked about and uh, chewed our moustaches and uh, talked to one another about f the French have a strange way of doing this they don't so much go immediately to the problem but they talk about fires historique and uh, fires they knew about in their childhood and yeah we, 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 that was dangerous but not as bad as the fire of 1924 and so on meanwhile the chimney is getting hotter and hotter and hotter because there was some resin left in the chimney stack from the previous winter and that was what was causing too much heat and making the pipe glow red up through the house. So somebody said, well, we, should, we should do something. And eventually the fire brigade was run. Except that the person who rang the fire brigade thought, oh, maybe that fire brigade won't come. And so rang three fire brigades. And within 10 minutes, we heard the clanging bells coming up the road and there were three full fire brigades at the front door. In the library here, we were only aware of it when Something like 14 or 15 firemen, fire persons, I should say, because three of them were women, burst into the library and said, my God, you've got a problem here. Yes, we said, that's why we sent for you. And they're in full uniforms. They have the helmets on and all of them are equipped with the essential uh, materials for putting out a fire that all French firefighters have. One woman had an axe in one hand, another had a hose in hand, another had a, um, some kind of blanketing equipment, another had a foam cylinder. They were all in the left hand because their right hands were all occupied with very large empty coffee mugs. That's apparently the crucial piece of equipment for a French fireman. You rush to a house, you want to put out the fire, but you, have a, you bring from the fire truck the crucial piece of equipment, which is an empty coffee mug. So they burst in here, filled the room. There must have been 30 people in the room by this stage. Everyone discussing the fire. Nobody doing a single thing about it. And finally the fire chief came in and said, we should look at this. They raced upstairs, looked at it, and then all thundered back down and says, oh yeah, yeah, could be a problem, but should be okay in an hour's time. We just shut the flues on the fire, which they proceeded to do, and then said, coffee, coffee, 
Anybody got coffee? So I filled the coffee jugs, sat round, talked about fires of the past, talked about futures of the fire, finished their coffee, uh, and then we're looking around and said, oh, there's a lot of wine here. But at that moment, there was a call, an urgent call from further down in the valley where, where, where there was a real fire. And apparently, this was much more important because they packed up all their equipment, tossed their coffee dregs out onto the terrace, and bolted out the door. And we only learnt later that the fire that was down the hill was at a vineyard, and they had much more wine down there, uh, which the empty coffee cups could accommodate than we had coffee up here. So you get sort of fun like that, as well as um, the normal daily grind of... Uh, living in Lamuse. John and Kerry, the people who run this place, um, are wonderful. They suffered a little bit of anxiety on that day, but they're always here. They're always welcoming. And so um, someone like myself can come here, enjoy that kind of thing, as well as the, the hard work of trying to get on and write some fiction. And you, of course, would be very welcome to be here. And if you do come here, having been here four times, we may meet, and I will say, um, hello, I'm John, I'm John Clancy, I love it here, let's talk about writing, let's talk about books. Uh, if you're an artist, please let me see what you're painting or what you're photographing. So I look forward to meeting you here at La Mousse sometime.